I'm here at the studios of KALW in San Francisco. Just finished up a show about a new dance performance called Ladies to the Rescue in San Francisco on August 8th and 9th. Uh, the program is led by Joe Kreider, the founder of Flyaway Productions. And she's been working with at-risk, low-income girls of color since 1999. And I'm here with Hosanna Asefa. She'll be a sophomore at ICA in the Mission. And Pearl Koo will be a senior at Lowell. And they both live in San Francisco. Hi, thanks for coming in. Hey. Hi. So how, what was it like for you both to be on the radio? You've never done that before. New experience. It was pretty cool. Did you like it? Yes. I mean, we spent the hour talking about talking about the stories of girls specifically the hidden stories of girls. What are your thoughts on the power of telling stories about girls and your stories? I think it's strong because everyone has a voice. They just need to find it first. And sometimes they need to be more comfortable with the people they're talking to to find out like they can actually talk to that person. But everyone just needs to know that their voice is strong and they can use it. Yes. Use your voice. Thank you. I love that. Um, do you feel like your stories are being told in the media? No. Because, um, mostly the media it's all, always about older people. It's not really about youth and what they do unless it's negative. So I feel like our, our stories are not being told. But now it gives them, now as many opportunities, like, to give them a chance to, like, for people to hear their voice. But I don't think they just know about it. So I feel like if they've seen us and how we're talking they'll be more comfortable coming in. So, What what stories do you want the media to tell about you and your communities? I would say just accomplishments and everything that they've been through because not everyone gets to know, not everyone is comfortable sharing their story, but I think it should be out there. Well... You and know, we're I'm, also here with Joe Kreider, a flyaway. I look Hi, at Joe. you two. You are both children of immigrants, one from Eritrea, one from Vietnam. You're um, accomplished enough in school to get scholarships to really good schools through really hard work and um, being open to new experiences. Um, you're not in a gang. You're not shooting anybody. You, um, One of you, you have identified Pearl yourself as someone who lives in, quote, the ghetto. And... Um, what that means to you and what that doesn't mean to you. I mean, just that story alone, mm. we don't really read about that in the newspaper. We either see really emaciated white models in Seventeen magazine or we hear about gang members killing each other. That's, that's about it for youth representation in mainstream media. And here you are, just the story of your life that you live every day, to me, is a story because um, if I didn't work really hard to create this program, I would never meet you. Mm -hmm. What was that experience like for you both, opening up magazines and looking at the magazine's portrayal of girls? Um, for me, when I was an early teenager, like 13, 14, I kind of was finding myself, as they say. Mm -hmm. So I would, like, open up magazines, see, like, what they talk about. It's mostly about fashion and looking good and fashion for, like, guys and, like, what to do about that. So I realized that that's not me. That's not who I want to be. I just want to be myself. So I kind of stopped looking at magazines, like, just straight out flat, no magazines, because I knew that it would make me have a low self-esteem. Mm. And it's not good to have a low self-esteem, and it's not good to compare yourself with anyone else but yourself and to see, like, who you can become and your potential. I never, when I opened up a magazine, I never realized, like, what they're doing to people. I just read it and, like, look through the pictures. But then I realized that it's really messing up people's self-esteem. So I feel like they should have magazines for, like, youth with no makeup. Because I'm feeling like youth is, like, rushing to grow up. And their only option is to be a model or something that they can be in a magazine. So I feel like um, if they had different magazines, not only skinny models and stuff, then they will be more, like, comfortable with themselves. And that brings up a question that was raised during the radio show. Um, Pearl, you said you've never heard a Native American speak before. Yeah. And we heard from Native American girls talk about their rituals in Missouri. And then we heard from traveling girls in Ireland. And there's also a misconception about what you care about, what young girls want to read about. 
And we're often told that it's basically fashion, makeup, reality shows, and that's about it. Mm -hmm. So can you talk about that? What, what do you care about? What interests you? Um, I'm interested in other people's stories to see what they've gone through, how they've gone through it. Because I think it's really eye-opening to see how they've done that. Because it's in order for them to do that, they need to be really strong women. And I think that it's nice to just hear other people's stories and cultures and where they come from, where their parents came from, and it's just like heritage. And your parents came from Vietnam. Yeah. And that was that was hard for you. Yeah. Yeah. What would you add to that? Um, well, I came, my parents came from Eritrea, so it was hard for them. And I don't really hear people's stories, like immigrant story. It's always um, other people talking for them. So if I, if people heard immigrant story and people who had like rituals and stuff, like that girl who was in like the Native American tribe. So um, if we heard more people stories and we will understand so it's all a learning process yeah or the immigrant stories are so negative yes. especially yeah. with the election yeah I and mean, also like having coming from an immigrant family it's really hard because you're stuck in between like two cultures mm -hmm. the native american and like for me like the chinese vietnamese side so you have to like really like choose and like identify yourself as like where you want to go and like your parents are like go become a doctor become a lawyer right and what what message would you send to people who make the media decisions um like the people who train like girls in that manner like mm -hmm. they just make them seem all seductive and how like just in magazines when i open it up it's always like girls are naked, like they just walk around naked all the time, and it's not they don't really have respect for themselves. So there's many girls who are like they they care about their body and they're not always so focused about that. And they make it seem like if an alien came in our planet, they would think that all girls are like that <laughs> because every like magazine that they like open up, it's always about like girls naked, seductive and stuff. So I feel like they should just put out different girls and different girls' interests because not everyone is like that. I would say that girls have feelings too and we have self-respect for ourselves too. Mm -hmm. So yeah. just like showing everyone's like different backgrounds and like diversity uh, is a big thing. Right. Not just the blonde yeah. model. Yeah. And and just quickly before we end, what was it? what's it been like for you to dance and tell your story through dance? Um, I think it's nice because even though I started dancing in high school, aerial dancing is something that's, like, new for me. So overcoming that fear of heights um, is really challenging, but you get used to it. And also choreographing with, like, a group of girls is a lot harder than it seems <laughs> because everyone has, like, different ideas, yeah. and you need to translate that into one single idea. Um, but it's been a really nice experience, and I'm glad I got into Fly Away and Oasis for Girls. Me, um, me too. I think that uh, Oasis is very fun, and a lot of girls, they don't know the resource like, to like, be in a dance team or a group. So I feel like I'm, like I'm very happy that I had the opportunity to come my way, and I feel like I want to continue dancing from here. That's great. Well, I can't wait to see it. Again, it's on August 8th and 9th. At Counterpulse in San Francisco, it's Ladies to the Rescue. And um, Joe Kreider is the founder of Flyaway Productions, an incredible dance company that exposes the range and power of female physicality. And she's been working with a number of girls on this performance, including Hosanna Asefa and Pearl Koo. And thank you both for coming in, and thank you, Joe. Thank and you, you. you can find a link to get tickets to Ladies to the Rescue under this video. Thank you.